Okay, so we are having a very good uh, panel here. Dr. Ajit Desai, Atul Mathur, Mahendra Singh Samal, and Navnit Singh, yeah. Nitin Kumar Kabra, Pawan Poddar, Sanjay Chang, Ramdev Yadav, and Rahul Gupta, and PK Hazra. So let's uh, begin with your case and introduce your team and start the case. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to Hyderabad Valve's team. Uh, this is uh, MGM Hospital at the Heart Valve Center. I'm uh, Dr. Gopala Murugan. To my left is Dr. Venkatesh, uh, interventional cardiologist. To my right is Dr. Rabu, interventional cardiologist. Uh, to the head end, Dr. Murli and team, cardiac anesthesia, and the entire team here at the Heart Valve Center. So uh, I shall let Dr. Um, Venkatesh crack on with the presentation, give you uh, a quick uh, overview of the case whilst I get on with the uh, procedure. Venkatesh, do you want to okay. go on to the case here from here? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is a 72 years old gentleman who underwent uh, a mitral valve replacement using a Wire. 29 mm St. Jude epic tissue valve. Um, uh, this is in 2010, almost 12 years ago. For the past four months, he's been complaining of shortness of mirth worsening to uh, NIHA class 3 with PND, got admitted with a heart failure, stabilized with medical management, and echocardiogram showed a, um, a severe uh, valvular regurgitation. So this is the uh, profile of the patient. Weight is 40 kg, BP 90, 50. Heart rate 50 is in uh, uh, AF with a controlled uh, ventricular rate. So ECG is showing uh, uh, AF with a controlled ventricular rate and VPC is in between. So uh, essentially, there is severe prosthetic valve dehiscence with mitral regurgitation with a normal LV function and grossly dilated left atrium. The PA pressures recorded were 80 in the initial presentation, which came down to 50 to 55 millimeters of mercury with diuresis. So this is the CT uh, with an internal diameter of around 25.5, uh, uh, 20, 26 mm. So here is the uh, CT uh, virtual with the 26 valve as well as the 29 valve. Uh, we have measured the LVOT. It's quite away from the LVOT without causing much of uh, disturbances to the LVOT. So the uh, 29 size uh, valve be having a, a true ID of 25 mm, a stent ID of 27, and a height of 19 mm. So with this, we have uh, had two accesses, um, uh, two venous accesses, a radial artery, and uh, uh, the, uh, the trying to take a septal puncture under the transesophageal echo guidance. So you've, you've seen the CT. Uh, essentially, we have a 29 biocore in the mitral position that has failed, leading to severe MR. Can you show the echo, please? Great. So you can see the echo, and uh, there is severe MR. Uh, he's an NVHA class 3. He needs a redo mitral valve. We've decided to proceed with a transcatheter mitral valve replacement with a transeptal mitral valve in valve. This is a 29 biocore, so the inner uh, diameter is 24, 25. We are planning to use a 26 sapien with a transvenous transeptal axis. Uh, we are in the difficult part of the procedure, which is the transeptal axis. His left atrium is huge. Uh, the CT analysis we have uh, already shown you. The new LVOT is fairly generous, so we don't anticipate the dreaded complication, which is LVOT obstruction. Uh, otherwise, one had to resolve other maneuvers. For this case, we don't anticipate LVOT obstruction. The main issue is getting a good transeptal uh, for the reasons I'm going to show you right now. Uh, I'll let you get on with your discussion, or I can show you where we are right now. So, Gopi, what yeah. was the area? Yeah, Gopal, the please go ahead and show us the transeptal. So, transeptal we have not done. We're just in the process of doing the transeptal. Uh, so, we're going to get on with the transeptal while you keep discussing. You can see the images. So, we're trying to get a very posterior and high uh, or low transeptal to get a good trajectory. I'm going to show you the uh, uh, views. Uh, can you show the views, Sini? So, Gopal, what okay. will be the strategy? Back. It is okay. TE based or a fluoro based puncture you prefer? 
it is never a floral base because it can never be done because you need a posterior and an inferior puncture which floral based one cannot know based on the mitral valve trajectory. I'm showing you an RAO of uh, this patient to uh, appreciate the valve trajectory. I hope you can see a thin line which is the epic valve. The downside of an epic valve, uh, valve in valve, as all uh, are aware, it is very poorly visible. Therefore, you only see the wire. You can see here, we've just got it as coaxial as possible. I hope you can appreciate that. Yes. Now, the idea is to try and get an inferior and posterior puncture so that you get a very straight trajectory into the valve. Now, that's proving difficult because this left atrium is huge. It measures about 9 centimeter on uh, CT and on echocardiogram. We're going to show you the echo pictures uh, where you will appreciate uh, why we are struggling to get a transeptal, but we will get there eventually. TOE. So we're in a bicable view. I'm trying to drop here. Can you show us the T also? Gopal? Yeah, it's visible. Can you see the uh, screen? Yeah, now we can see. Okay, great. So that's where we are. We are in a very low position. I'm happy there. Uh, give us a post, uh, give us a uh, short axis, please. That's fairly, I just need to make sure we're very posterior. REO on fluoro, please. Gopi, it's Anand, Anand here. Good afternoon. Anand. I miss you. <laughs> Go on. No, nine centimeter LA. What is your puncture kit? What are you having there? BRK12 or what is it? I've got an SRO. My standard is SRO yes. and a BRK. Yes. Uh, you can see here. This is my puncture location on REO. Uh, I'm just doing a cine. I hope you can appreciate. We are fairly posterior. And I hope this is going to be a good trajectory. I just need to see visibly on. Uh, oh, there you go. Looks you perfect. saw the TOE there? Can you see there? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Okay, come LAO please on, uh, come LAO. The puncture at, uh, okay, septal I'm puncture through. is the most crucial part for TMVR. And uh, for TMVR it is usually inferior and posterior. So that you can have a good alignment to take your device across the... I mean, I, I'll tell you, this is the fourth uh, time we have been trying to get a transeptal, and there you go. We just now managed to get it in the right position where we think we should be, uh, and uh, you can see here, I'm, uh, I am where I think I should be. It's a fairly tough transeptal, and there you go. All right. Uh, one second, one second. So, uh, show us the catheter, please. Just make sure we're in the LA, uh, everything out, please. Give me a turmo and exchange for an agilis. Okay, so you can see on uh, TOE the catheter is in position and uh, anticoagulate, please give us some more. Yeah, just get AC, keep AC at 300 from now on. Thanks. Turmo wire. Let's give you uh, an LA pressure. What is the catheter you're using right now? Is it a multipurpose? This is the Agilis. No, this is uh, just uh, an SRO. Okay. Which is in the, no, SRO. I'm going to exchange for an Agilis. And uh, the Agilis will be used to cross. So I'm just giving you a left atrial pressure. I hope uh, we can get a left atrial pressure. Okay, um, can you see a left atrial pressure there? Mm -hmm. uh, the left atrial pressure you can see is on yellow, uh, peak of 68 uh, and a mean of 36. Yeah, mean of 36, um, to remove why please. So what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna exchange the SRO for an Agilis, and the Agilis will allow us to enter the mitral valve and then we will exchange uh, for a stiff system. Check the wire, guys. Boys. Okay. 
Uh, it was somewhere, somewhere up there, you know, left upper. So we will exchange. Ajul is ready. Let right. me ask uh, Rahul. Dr. Rahul, yeah. what will be your strategy uh, for a septal puncture and septal dilatation to facilitate your device for my EMDR? So as I think he has pointed out, the good getting a good uh, septal puncture is extremely important. Like uh, we took all the time uh, where the uh, LA is dilated, getting posterior inferior. Once uh, we are in, for you are talking about septal dilatation, I would use about uh, eight millimeter balloon uh, for septal dilatation uh, before putting the. Don't you think eight will 14. be a little too small for 14. the? Fourteen. Hmm? For the. Yeah. At least 12 or so. Normally, we prefer at least 12 millimeter or if no, I no, wire still wire if it makes a device point. too difficult yeah, to cross, yeah, then yeah, you yeah, yeah, go little up. Let go. Right. So minimum 12 we usually uh, yeah. plan for a septal dilatation. And this flossing should also be used while we are trying to work, once we are inflating, just to see how the movement is. Okay. So Gopal, how do you take it forward as far as the septal dilatation is concerned? Do you go directly with the 12 millimeters? So I normally use a 14 Mustang. Okay. No, I take a Mustang balloon. I uh, uh, usually 10 millimeter is all I need to take a sapient system through. Uh, never had any issues. Uh, uh, 12 or 14 millimeter Mustang is my preferred uh, balloon for septal dilatation. And uh, after that, uh, we would take the valve. The valve we are gonna take is a 26 Edwards. This is very important for uh, valve in valve procedures. Usually, you should know the previous valve sizes so that, and there is a beautiful app uh, by Dr. Vinayak Bapar for valve in valve aortic and valve in valve mitral. So, you just have to go in that app. MPA if you know your valve, you can get a true ID uh, to uh, valve size and you MPA can easily select and, your uh, valve from that app. Wire. Sometimes it's not that easy to get the operative notes. Uh, it can be difficult. It, in those cases, it's reasonable to do a CT as long as a good quality CT. You can see the ID of the actual uh, valve, which is good enough because sometimes patients lose surgical notes and uh, we've had occasions where we just can't find the operative notes. Uh, MPA. So where we are is uh, we have an Agilis. You can see here. Uh, uh, let's go, Ario, please. Why? Uh, and uh, I'm Gopi, I saw you using should, the. Uh, have a straight trajectory. Yeah, Gopi. Anand. Gopi, Anand here. I saw you using yeah. the stiff wire and then going with the Yeah, Agilis. yeah, Anand. Uh, for the beginners, I just want you to point yeah. out if you use an LA wire. If you put an LA wire and over that you take an Agilis, because you are experienced, you are very experienced, and in your hands, it's very safe, uh, this, what you have done, parking that in the upper pulmonary and then exchanging. But in the sort of starting stages, whenever you have crossed you that, you put an LA wire, it gives you extra safety, and then taking the Agilis is very easy. Tail. Very simple, very easy. But once you get so the you Agilis... So you saw here, uh, through the Agilis, I have a MPA straight into the LV, and uh, we're going to exchange this for a pigtail followed by uh, a stiff wire. Sorry, Anand, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to. No, no, you carry on. You carry on. Bit. Uh, there are several things you can do. You can put the jalebi wire, put AG list. You can take multipurpose. But multipurpose, yeah. you can go through the paravalvular leak. Okay. If you have a paravalvular area, which was a hole, uh, so just pigtail sure will avoid the valve. that. If you do not Please. have paravalvular leak, then multi-purpose pigtail. If you have paravalvular leak, then take pigtail. And future will be hologram. We are talking about hologram and fusion imaging. So on the CT scan, if you have a G machine and the G cath lab, you can fuse both the images. So without much fluoroscopy, you can cross the septum with the guidance of T. Or also you can enter into the mitral valve with the hologram, like if you have a virtual image in front of you. So that case has been shown in TCT 2022. 
So these are the things which are uh, having having some innovative thoughts for Safari. the future. So what does uh, obviously simpler is um, uh, as Kopi is showing. Once you cross it uh, with the uh, uh, jalebi and Mario. the jalebi, you Small. go directly with the pigtail from the L across into the mitral. You never catch anything. You will not be able to cross through any parallel leak. You go directly with the pigtail. If your pigtail is not crossing, then you put your wire and take the pigtail on top of that. The simplest Which balloon you'll take? 12 25, 14? yeah. So anything more than 26, you are going to deploy, you take a 14. Anything less than 26, you take a 12. But nothing less than 12 for a ATL 26 above, 14, 26 less, 12. Hey, come Mario, show me. So uh, we just got a safari in, into the uh, LV, a lot of uh, irritation. It's very dangerous. You need to cover it up, ma. Gopal, any specific uh, type of safari you would use, small, medium, or large? Uh, any preference? A small, small. Uh, uh, no, I would just take a small, which uh, fits for most patients. Uh, you don't want to take an extra small because the mobility will be too much. Uh, of course, if it's extremely dilated LV, you can take a large, but uh, usually small fits most patients. Um, Ishi, ready? Got it? So, uh, I mean, now we, we just do all this with a single wire, uh, you know, having evolved uh, with the early stages, it was always a, a VA loop previously when uh, we were learning and we didn't have the confidence. Now it's all evolved into a much more sleeker uh, procedure. Of course, this patient was slightly more complex. In fact, uh, I did three times transeptal. I was unhappy. I took it out. And then uh, it was the fourth time that you actually saw because my plan was to get the transeptal so that you're all ready for the valve before, but it didn't work out as I planned. But that's crucial. It's important we don't cut corners and, uh, and take the quickest transeptal because uh, I have ended up in trouble in the past, and then you end up snaring the wire, then you'll have to take a VA loop. Sometimes there was once where uh, the transeptal I thought was all good, but uh, eventually it was uh, horrible. We couldn't get the valve at all, there was no support, and then I ended up having to do a transepical puncture, snare that valve out, uh, wire out, and then use it for support. But you don't want to be doing all this in this very, very friable patient who only weighs, you know, uh, 40 kilograms, so I really don't want to do all that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we got an E sheet here. I don't know if you can see my hands. Uh, Gopal, we can, can you clip a bioprosthetic valve? Yeah. yeah. Can you clip? Uh, no, clip I wouldn't attempt. I technically, I uh, I think it's clippable, but I can't see an indication why one would want to clip a bioprosthetic valve because a it is the smallest. Uh, uh, orifice that is available to us compared to a natural valve. Number two, there's no reason to clip, I guess. You'd, uh, you know, you would always want to replace it because if you clip a bioprosthetic valve, it is impossible to have a valve area without stenosis, logically speaking. What do you think the mechanism of bioprosthetic failure here? Here is just a, a biocore, a porcine tissue, uh, never known to last more than... Uh, 10, 12 years, so uh, you know, if you look at all the biocores, I'm not aware of any biocores that has lasted uh, much longer. So biocores, porcine, go away. Uh, so uh, I would, uh, nowadays, of course, uh, we would go for a, for a non-porcine, perhaps a, a, a bovine tissue. I think the longest uh, tested bovine tissue now, uh, resilient tissue seems to be very promising, but only time will answer. We have only seven year data thus far. Uh, we did the first uh, resilient mitris valve also 
uh, last year. So uh, we'll see. Time will answer, which means more younger patients can have a bioprosthetic, which could last much longer uh, than the current bioprosthetic valve. But they, those are all post-sign, not post-sign, bovine tissues. So the issue uh, ready for the valve? out here I'm raising, uh, balloon, once the please. bioprosthetic valve balloon. fails in one human balloon. being, you put another bioprosthetic valve of the same yeah. mechanism will happen. So definitely, I was trying to bring the resilia into the discussion. You have already uh, mentioned that the new valve technology, Perfect. resilia or Foldex, the polymer valve will be the future. The polymer yeah. valve can last ever. It will outlive the patient's life. The Foldex or other polymer based will be much thinner, smaller in profile. For the timing, be happy with the available existing valve. But resilia is definitely one of the solutions. So Gopal, now we are using 26 millimeters uh, yeah. CPN3 here. The access will be 16 mm -hmm. French. So for the venous access, yeah. you prefer? Uh, 16 of? Or yeah, so uh, it, it, it's going to be an E sheet, 14, which will go up to 21 when we get the valve through. Uh, so uh, venous access, you can see here on the camera. Camera, please show us the uh, connections, please. Do you prefer proglide or surgical for venous access? Uh, proglide. Proglide. So we'd always proglide it, both for mitral clips and, uh, and uh, E sheets. And uh, that usually closes nicely. So you can see here on uh, the camera here, this is a uh, E sheet here. I have not inserted it as much because I know I need some, uh, I need some uh, critical uh, length to be able to load the valve in the IVC. That's why I've not snugged it fully in. On the right side, move, camera. On this side, on the left side, we have a temporary wire. Uh, no arterial access, obviously. We have an art line from the radial, from the anesthetic side. But usually, we don't need an arterial access unless extremely complicated. We have to snare it to create a VA loop. In a balloon? In a... Uh, okay, check the wire. Okay, this is... Uh, this is uh, okay, this is uh, Cook 14 millimeter balloon that I'm taking up. And uh, this is to dilate the septum. Get to the septum, guys. Give me an LAO, please. LAO. Uh, Lalita, can you check on uh, echo? Make sure the balloon is across. 14 millimeter balloon? Yeah, this is a 14. Uh, I think I'm probably too, uh, too RA. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, We'll leave it there. I like to leave the balloon there uh, normally uh, whilst the valve is being prepared. It allows the hole to be nice and organized. When you take the uh, valve with the pusher, it flies in. Uh, at least that's the hope. Uh, I hate to do a balloon and then quickly come out. The trick is to leave it in whilst I go get the valve for you. Okay, the valve there is, is all ready. One more uh, good learning right. point here. If you take this inflated balloon and try to take it across the mitral valve, and if it crosses easily, that gives uh, us a good idea and a confidence your device will not give you much trouble. I wouldn't actually, because uh, you actually risk the mother of all strokes if you do that. So I normally don't take anything through the mitral valve because you're dealing with a very friable tissue with panis and all sorts of junk there. Even your valve uh, wire now that I got has a significant risk of embolization and stroke. So the last thing I would do is to take a balloon through also because it doesn't serve much purpose. You only risk uh, embolization and stroke. Ideally, you should have a sentinel, but sentinel being extremely expensive, we don't do this, uh, you know, we've just got away even with the very mad procedures, basilicas and lampoons. We've not had any clinical strokes, but I'm sure we showered enough into the brain. Uh, but coming to the point of taking the balloon through the valve, I wouldn't. I wouldn't no, no. recommend that. I'm and not I don't saying do that. you have to take yeah, the inflated balloon. Against the flossing. Yeah. The flossing will make the trajectory easier. If a flossing fails, perhaps you have uh, to change the strategy. 
That's what uh, Anmol was. But definitely, the hindsight, I mean, on the negative side, you have chance of embolism. Yeah, because flossing, you're still going to take the balloon or wing the balloon through the valve, and uh, you could uh, knock off pieces completely uh, off the valve if you take a winged balloon. So that's why I don't floss it, I don't take it. If you created a nice hole, it should go. Uh, and the nice hole meaning you need a good diameter. Uh, for a critical time, usually a few minutes, and the critical diameter I would go for is a minimum 12 to 14, and uh, we have done that. So now we're ready for the valve. Uh, I'm going to take the valve. So the recommendation for this is a 29 or a 26. Uh, I'm going to take a 26, and I hope to flare it more uh, uh, ventricular. Let's see how it goes. We have some uh, bailout uh, volume also in case we end up with any issues. And as a bailout, I forgot to mention, we have ECMO on standby. If we embolize, uh, we will be doing that. So okay, Gopal, are you using Binoy Papad's app for ID? Um, yeah, or do you have I do. Uh, yeah. Which app you are no, using? No, we don't. But of course, b before I don't use the app routinely. I would check the valve uh, personally. So nowadays, this was where the time when we had to go in blind. The valve app also tells us roughly what is the size if we knew the the valve by by a surgical valve. But sometimes we don't always get the uh, surgical note. And to have the best confirmation, I like to use the actual CT. And that tells me the diameter. Uh, so now, because we always get a CT in all. Okay, so if your ID uh, you is 25, failure, if your ID, you, Gopal, if your ID is 25, do you think yeah. 26 or quarter size yeah. will be better from my valve? No. no. 26, 26 should be. Uh, I don't know the my valve because I never used one. So uh, I just go with 26 sapient. Gopal, one question. All right. Show me the you said you are going to use yeah. a 26 sapien, and if needed, you might go up on yeah. the size. But the sapien Why? does not uh, usually yeah. go up as required. No, uh, not as required. Uh, you can happily take a 26 up to 27, 28 also. There is enough coaptation depth on the leaflets. Uh, so you can just add volume as you need. Uh, uh, I'm just loading the valve, as you can see, in the IVC. Uh, okay, that looks all right. Okay, so uh, just a, a note uh, with the Sapien system, we have the E facing downwards, uh, because normally for a TAVA, you'd have it facing upwards. So if you have it facing upwards, the, uh, the flex, the commander system rotates on to the uh, right of the patient. But if you have the E downwards, uh, the commander system will rotate to the left of the patient, and that's what I want in a mitral. But all said and done, when you go there inside, it goes all over the place, and usually you'll have to play it uh, by feel and what you see, because this heart is extremely rotated. I don't have a clue what is the best direction to keep the E, but I will just go by, you know, knowledge on uh, how it turns and uh, how it's going to play out. Excuse me, delegates so let's, can have uh, a go cup of tea and, and we'll come take in. it from there. Cup of tea and coffee is available outside. You we can, can pick up your cups and come inside. No, it will continue. This is very important. So we'll take a tea break after five, seven minutes. Yeah. What? Cup of coffee? No, no. God. Go ahead, nice. Gopal. Go ahead. Can we get coffee also? That was a joke, by the way. Please go ahead. No, no, Gopi, you carry on. This is the most important part. How I think much uh, RAO, uh, the valve, uh, the epic valve is seen here. Alignment of the uh, uh, RAO. Give us a, give us a. How much RAO you are doing to see the alignment implant. of the epic valve? Because that will uh, allow you to. So this is. The, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the epic uh, uh, implant view. Give us an implant view, please. So we're going to show you the implant view. Uh, implant view is an RAO, but uh, cranial. So currently, we're in RAO uh, cranial 21. Uh, center the valve for me, please. Hold those sheets for us. Uh, 
Okay, Abu, you're gonna adjust the uh, wire for me? Smooth. Okay, there you go. Easy to cross. Very nice. Can you just tell us about positioning okay, now this, this is valve? The, how how you are yeah, so position positioning this valve this is uh, yeah. We'll go through that in a second. I'm just gonna try and get the pusher out and uh, do all my housekeeping before we go into that. Uh, the first is going to be to release the tension because I'm trying to get a coaxial position. Sometimes you can use the commander system to get as coaxial as possible. Uh, but uh, I can assure you, uh, you pretty much one would never ever get coaxial. It will always be like this at an angle of 45, 50, sometimes even 80 degrees to the actual plane of the uh, bioprosthetic valve. The only time it is going to align is as you start inflating as the whole system uh, aligns itself. So it is a dynamic process. Uh, that's the only way. And the idea is, mind you, the valve is going to open from atrial to uh, ventricular, which means we have uh, reversed the valve direction that you would normally do for a TAVA. So I'm going to keep it about 20% atrial and 80% ventricular. Uh, the downside of an EPIC is you can't see the pillars, because if we saw the pillars, you can position the ventricular end at the pillars and accept whatever you get atrially. But you can't see the pillars, so you have only one option, which is to uh, go by uh, the valve ring, which you can see there. All right, any 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 points there uh, of discussion? Uh, Gopal, otherwise, we Gopal, are ready to go. Test the pacing, please. How how do you yes. make sure that the alignment is proper when you are inflating the balloon? Uh, there's no way, so I'm going to, uh, it's going to be a dynamic process, I said, so what's going to happen is I'm going to position it roughly where I think I'm going to be coaxial as the valve inflates, so it's going to be a lot of imagination that one has to bear in mind. Uh, number two is uh, whatever you do, you have to be very slow because you will have to uh, wait for the atrial and the ventricular portion both to dumbbell. Because if you go quick, what you do risk is the ventricular portion alone going high and the atrial being a cone. When that happens, you're guaranteed embolization into the ventricle. Uh, of course, I've had that before also, and it's a disaster. So it is important you wait, keep it somewhere 70, 30, and be prepared to push forward because what you don't want it's a perfect landing zone, aim for a perfect landing zone, and then end up in embolization. You'd rather get less than perfect, but no embolization, because that's the worst case. Of Got course, it. you don't want it too atrial, because if you do, you're going to have an in-out mitral regurgitation. That's a disaster, too. The more atrial uh, metal you have, the higher the risk of valve failure and valve thrombosis. So it's a balance. Gopal, you have a question from Dr. Anand. No, 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 you carry on. I think the valve is in position. Yes, Anand. No, no, first you deploy No, no, the carry valve. on. Carry on, Anand. Deploy it. So, Anand, you start with 50-50, then it become 80-20, or start with 80-20, finish with 80-20? No, you start with 50-50, because it will tend to dive in initially. Then you have to bring it back. And as Gopi was saying, it has to be a very, very slow, controlled inflation. A 20% inflation, okay. see that, position it. 50% inflation, you can still position it. Then you go to 80 percent, then you get it. Uh, but the LV flaring is right. important because the LV flaring. Abu, the, ready? You need to get the, the LV flaring. Part, valve sort of proximal part. So you keep 50-50, and once it attaches, Prola. slightly so that. Fully. Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, this particular valve, slow. you don't Sorry? see the stent post. That's a major disadvantage with the biocar. You only see the wire. So there is a lot of imagination that goes through because it's creating that figure of eight. You see that figure of eight. When the balloon starts to inflate, you will see what Gopi is doing. It will move a lot. So the inflation is going to be very controlled, under pacing, almost like one minute, even more than that. Go ahead. Right. Right, you can see here, this is my uh, final position before I go. Can we get the valve more coaxial, boys? Concentrate here. Looks good. 
Get more coaxial, get more cranial, please. Cranial, bit more, super. Stop, stop. Less cranial, stop. So the idea is to try and get the valve as coaxial as possible and uh, you know, you can never get it as a straight line because the valve shape itself is uh, ellipsoid, as you can see, two ellipsoid lines. Right, so we're going to do a lot of maneuvering as we deploy. That's the only way to do this. Right. It looks good, Gopal. Okay. Uh, pacing on the, we're going to pace at uh, 180, maximum output. Now off, soldier over here, nobody else talking. Nobody else talking. Breathing off, soldier. Breathing off, panikla. Uh, Abu, you're going to go very, very slow, and all the way point. We maybe uh, we'll do a double in inflation. I'll tell you when. Don't stop until we tell you. Okay. Ready for CPR? Uh, shock point the the device is connected. Okay. So we're just doing our final checks that is routine, which is make sure somebody's there for CPR, make sure the defib is connected because there is a good chance you'll end up in VF, you're going to run a long uh, pacing drive, and we make sure ECMO is available should we have to go on pump support. So it's key, all this is available and ready, and all the teams are well-oiled and ready to go, and there's a risk of embolization uh, where we're going to try and make sure we don't uh, get any of those. All right. Uh, ready, guys? Yeah. Okay. Breathing off, pacing on. Abu, start going. Start going slowly. All the way. All the way. Okay. Down. Down, down, buddy. Stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Go up again, Abu. Go up. Good. Down, down. Stop pacing, guys. All right, cool. Getting a pressure? Got a pressure? Okay, good. I'm getting a pressure. Let's get rid of this. You got the sheet for me? You got the sheet for me? Okay. Let's take this damn thing off completely. Okay, let's make sure you don't pull on the wire. So, uh, okay, give us a pigtail, guys. All right, save. Both your dry run and well, wet run was perfect. I hope you saw perfect. the inflation. Let's pay the. Sorry. Both dry run and wet Come run again. was perfect. Thank you. Give us a pigtail, please, guys. Give us a TOE. And. Uh, <clears throat> excellent demonstration of uh, deploying the valve and adjustment on fly and correcting the position. It is very important in TMVR. You have to uh, inflate the valve slowly compared to tower valves. You to, it is a prolonged pacing and prolonged inflation. Can we have a. Okay, let's get coaxial, guys, and uh, zoom in and uh, show the final position, what we have. All right, get coaxial. Okay, that's the final position. Give us a TOE. Switch to TOE, please. Can you have a TOE image? Oh. Give us TOE. So, Gopal, as you said, the important steps would be to slowly inflate maybe take a minute or so 
and also at the same time the maneuver which you mm -hmm. showed by pushing the thing further so that the alignment becomes better and you also inflated the balloon twice absolutely right yeah so so that was uh, again another dynamic decision that you make uh, because uh, uh, why don't we show the inflation please so if i have any doubt that I'm not uh, well flared ventricularly because if you were to embolize during deployment, the embolization from my experience is always more ventricular. Once you deploy the valve, embolization after is going to be atrial because the LV is going to push it. And the only way that's going to prevent it is a good flare. And there I thought it was less flared. That's why I did a second inflation. You see that? Uh, that allows the ventricular portion to be a bit more flare. And that gives me confidence that I, that valve ain't going anywhere after that. Yeah. Topal, I'm right, just playing a devil's, uh, and devil's advocacy route. here. Suppose you have embolized in the LA. Would you fix yeah. it by ASD device or a college surgeon? I'd call a surgeon. Did you get me? Anand? Yeah, I'll call a surgeon because uh, we have embolized. Once you embolize, there's no point in doing anything. If the hemodynamics you, you is okay, I wouldn't uh, play around. Anand, yeah, you can answer yeah, that. Yeah, complete, complete embolization, partial embolization towards LA, towards uh, LV. Those are all important. Uh, Obviously, we have gone through, uh, myself and Gopi, we had the partial embolization. So, Immediately you load one more valve, you go in and put it. In the end, you see the TE pictures, you will see nicely two valves opening, valve in valve. Uh, but it's a fantastic uh, demonstration of how you have to do it. Because you started with the 50%, it will try to dive in. But once you inflate it, you can see it's pushing towards Shows the roof. The implantation. As you push the catheter, it makes contact. This is exactly the technique for valve in ring as well. The valve in ring is even more difficult. At least you are not seeing a stent post here, but there is a stent post. In valve and ring, there is nothing. It's only a ring. So it's exactly the same technique. You start inflating, keep it at 50%. It will try to dive in. You just bring it back. But the last 10 to 20%, you push it to the roof. See that? And uh, that's exactly what he's doing. And once you push it to the roof, complete contact. And if you're not satisfied, you've you not created a LV flare, Three chamber go back with the same balloon inside and create huh? an LV flare. OK, trust, trust. One more. What do you do with the ASD? Close it. So, uh, <laughs> Or open it, paradoxical embolism, atrial shunting, LA pressure, future intervention? No, it depends on the pressures, LA pressures and RA pressures. If there is no left to right significant shunt, I'll keep it like that only. I will not close it. That's a beautiful what? demonstration, Gopi. Excellent. Gopal, what do you do about the ASD? Gopi, can you hear? Yes, I yeah, yeah. can hear you uh, See very the well. Pressures. Uh, great See? discussion about uh, the the transeptal uh, closure. So uh, transeptal, when, when we started TMVR, this is back in 2011, this, is, this was the world, very first world's first TMVRs, we always closed the uh, transeptal axis. Uh, but over time, now we don't close any transeptal. It almost always closes by itself. Uh, and there's no reason to put a device, and we don't even check the LARA pressures to decide if you need to do a transeptal closure. So uh, that, that we don't close at all. You can see here, we have a laminar flow through the uh, uh, mitral valve. We have no mitral regurgitation, and uh, there is no valvular or a paravalvular leak, and uh, we are set to take everything off, and. Uh, I am ready to jump on the plane to catch you guys there for a whiskey. Yeah. The TE shows Go amazingly well that uh, LV flare. Look at that. Congratulations. Congratulations. The team will break for the team. Wonderful, wonderful demo of TMBR. So just Thank one you. question. Will there be any strategy difference uh, if it is a stenotic uh, degeneration versus a regurgitant degeneration or is all the same? Gopal, no, one question uh, from... No, it will uh, be uh, exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it'll be exactly the same, stenotic or regurgitation. Uh, but stenotic, uh, you probably want to be uh, uh, very cautious about embolization. Uh, now uh, it's better to put a sentinel with stenotic valves because uh, the chance of embolization is much higher with stenotic. And when it comes to valve sizing, it is uh, forgiving to uh, undersize rather than oversize a stenotic valve because you have so much tissue and panis 
uh, the valve sometimes doesn't even dilate well enough. So Thank you. that's Thank the only you. difference. But otherwise, the strategy, transeptal, everything is the same. Thank you, Gopal. Wonderful Thank you, Gopal, demo. and congratulations. Excellent.